When it comes to major renovations of properties, it no longer makes sense to install gas boilers, because gas boilers will be less efficient, more expensive to run, and quite often, they're not that much cheaper to install. And in this video, I'll show you a full process of such an installation on a large renovation project. Today we are in Windsor on a, a large renovation where I'll be installing a full heating system based on a heat pump. So this is where the external unit will go and that window is the window to the utility where the cylinder and the plant room is going to be. And this is our drainage that the builders have prepared for a soak away for the external unit. Ground floor is not ready for us yet. Upstairs, however, we already starting to leave the boards so we can run our pipe work for radiators and the radiators are on site. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hang the radiators on the walls, run all the pipe work, pressure test it, remove radiators for decorating. So that took us about a day to run the pipe work for four bedrooms, hallway and two bathrooms and uh, hang six radiators on the walls. It's all filled with water now, you can see. There was a leak here, it wasn't tight. Time to load the tools up and go to another side. So we are back to this job in Windsor today and they've made a massive progress. The windows are in and the ground floor is ready for us to start installing underfloor heating. So as you can see, the floors have been nicely prepared for us by the builders. Below that DPM, we have 120 mil of rigid insulation. Now, what's the reason for not sticking straight to the insulation? Well, the reason is, if you use liquid screeds, they apparently react with insulation, they eat through it. So that insulation has to be protected from the chemicals uh, within the screed. So if you were doing a dry mix, traditional screed, it's, it's fine to just put it straight on top of the insulation. So the way those panels get installed, you pull the film out, There are little blobs of adhesive on the back. It's really sticky stuff. And there are also clips that clip into the other panel. So, you position the panel and you clip it in. And you just stick them to the floor and they stick on the adhesive. There is no need going very super tight spacings on this job and using more materials than needed because even at 150, millimeter spacing, this job will still run below 35 uh, degrees flow temperature on the heat pump, giving us efficiencies well over 400%. So pipe work's done and I'm ready to purge the uh, pipe work in underfloor heating. We're gonna run mains water through all the loops. Once that's done, I'm gonna connect my pressure testing pump and pressurize uh, all the pipe work to five bar to pressure test it for an hour. Then we're gonna drop it to probably two, maybe three bar and leave three bar in the pipework for the screening company. So if there's an accident, if someone goes through the pipework, they will know immediately because the water will just start pouring out from the pipework. Next step of the job is to get the screening company down here. So hopefully we can come back here within a week's time and install the plant room that will go there, same place where the manifold is right now. So we are back to Windsor today. It's another probably a week and a half, and they've done the street. And we are ready to put the cylinder and the heat pump in. However, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that for two reasons, let me show you. The cylinder return connection is cross-threaded, so this has to be sent back to Veiland. And also we've got other trades electricians working in the plant room. But at least we can do all the external works. So we've cored through the wall, we're gonna put the unit in place and do all the external wiring, all the external pipe work. So let me show what we're doing. As you can see on the unit I've got on the return, I've got one anti-freeze valve and two flexible hoses actually will go through those two cores in the wall and connect that to rigid pipe work inside. I haven't done it before running flexible hoses through the wall. But I, I don't see why it should be a problem. If you think it is, leave a comment and maybe you'll force me to come back and change it. But otherwise, because, because those connections goes straight from the heat pump straight through the wall, 
Uh, there's no other way to have flexible connections. You would have to just hard pipe it, which I don't think is compliant. So I really like it because you only have 300 millimeters or 30 centimeters run of external pipe work going straight through the wall. It's probably the best thing you can do. Can't get this done without a 28 mil bender, can you? We haven't been here for a month and it looks like... Looks like the builders are gone. Let's see what progress they've made. So the whole of the ground floor is now tiled, which will make for an excellent underfloor heating because tiles put no resistance whatsoever on the heat transfer, so-called TOG value zero which allows us the lowest possible flow temperature, the highest possible efficiency. I think this house has a chance to have the highest heat pump efficiency we've ever installed. And here, replacement cylinder from Valent. This delayed us on this job by, I think, three weeks. Yeah, it's been three weeks. But finally it's here and we can carry on with the works, finishing the plant room. I'm at the stage now where all the pipe work is finished and I'm ready to turn the water on. Let's see how many leaks we get this time. And we have the first leak. I forgot to tighten that valve right there. That's my pressure gauge up there and it's already getting to about one bar. Sadly we have to come back tomorrow because there's two radiators upstairs lagging on all this pipe work. And that's it. And just commission the unit. We already fired it up, it runs fine on hot water. Haven't tested it on heating yet. And the unit is now running super quiet. I checked inside, it's 70% uh, modulation of the compressor. And look, I'm just next to it. Just no noise whatsoever. It's just tons of cold air. And it's not a very warm day today. So it's a bit chilly. I'll better change my location. And I'm really happy with the super short run of pipe work. This is like, I don't know, 30 centimeters of pipe work outside only. So that's the best what you can do if it's at all possible just to go straight into the property. All the pipe work's finished, the whole system's finished, everything's powered up and I'm ready to start commissioning. The first thing I'm gonna check are my flow rates because my flow rates are super important to me and i'm expecting between 1200 1400 liters on heating and i should be getting the same on hot water and my primary run is it's not it's very short it just goes from here to the diverter so this is less than three meters from the external unit as you can see a very decent flow rate what's interesting is i went through the menu and i wanted to see what is the maximum flow rate i can get on heating and i'm getting close to 2000 liters if i set the pump to a fixed speed of 100 percent which means that when i get my correct flow rate of around 12 to 1400 liters that pump only needs to run at very low power 40 to 50 percent of its power so the system is designed with such a low resistance on it that that pump will never have to work very hard, will consume less energy and last much longer. And obviously I also have my manifold where I've set my flow rates for all the circuits and I have no problems there whatsoever achieving correct flow rate on the manifold. What's interesting on this job is that the client requested that we run a separate circuit for cooling those there white ones, pre-insulated MLCP, they go all the way to the loft, that pipe is actually coiled there, and they will connect it to a heat exchanger, again water to air, and he'll have a series of ducts and fans uh, distributing a cool air. If he wants to cool in the summer, he'll have to isolate the radiators, 
he can cool with underfloor heating no problem so he can use that to cool the ground floor and then upstairs will be cooled by uh, air so kind of air conditioning uh, setup I'm not sure how well it's gonna work I've never tried it I'm not involved in calculating it I was just told by the supplier of that heat exchanger what kind of pipe they wanted that's a 32 ml CP going all the way to the loft so I've tested uh, my heating and now I'm getting correct flow rates it's time to set the heat curve and the heat curve on this setup will be 0.4 maximum flow temperature of 35 degrees so we're expecting really nice efficiencies out of this setup. I hear you now saying, return on investment. What's the return on such a big investment? What's the return? That's, that's a, such a silly question, guys. What's the return on investment of your gas boiler? No one thinks about it that way. What's the return on investment on any kitchen or bathroom? No one thinks in those terms. If you install renewables on a property like that, heat pumps or solar, that's 0% VAT, that's 20% cheaper to install. And that is all your radiators and underfloor heating as well. So on a job of that size, it makes a lot of sense. It's much cheaper than going with the gas boiler. On top of that, we get a grant of 5,000 pounds from the government that definitely helps. And if you think about it, if you were to install a high-end, decent weather compensated gas boiler such as Visman, Veiland, Intergas and an invented cylinder and pay VAT on that and not have those £5,000 available, it's really very close in price and it's only going to get closer. If you want a high-performance gas system, it really is not that much cheaper because underfloor heating is going to be the same, radiator is going to be the same, you size them to the same flow temperature. Your controls are exactly the same, for example, on Veyland. The cylinder is very comparable. Well, it is cheaper, but you probably want to uh, install a, a heat pump cylinder anyway to future-proof it if you're installing a gas boiler. And it's just the heat source. In my opinion, on the renovation of the site, you would have to be mad to be installing gas. just makes no sense whatsoever. I'm really curious to what you think, but please don't use the argument, what's the return on investment, because... Uh.